Our first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my husband to lose the entitled attitude and do stuff for himself? Just recently, my husband, 31, was promoted to assistant manager of the warehouse. We both work on the ups of 50 hours a week. I am shift manager at a behavioral disorders facility. Both jobs are very hands-on and strenuous. Since his promotion, he has developed an entirely different attitude. Extremely entitled, and dare I say, rude as all hell. He is always boasting and bragging. This has been going on for three weeks. So, some examples are as followed. On his days off, he wants the house to be radio silent. If our four-year-old wants to play, he tells her to stick to her bedroom because he needs peace and quiet after working so hard. If I make our daughter lunch, he will immediately say, where's mine? He asks me to grab him things damn near, constant all hours of the night. He expects nightly back rubs, but if I ask, he will scoff at me and say, I worked all day, even if I had as well. He expects meals that he likes made every night, regardless of me or our daughter like the meal or not. He also now acts like he has full say over the money because he makes more. Last night was a tip of the iceberg for me. Before this, I let a lot of stuff slide because it was a recent promotion and hell, he's excited. So I get it. But last night around like 11 p.m., I was in bed scrolling through my phone, he comes into the bedroom, lays down and says, Babe, you should go make some ice cream. I want the chocolate drizzle on it. And oh, don't forget the cashews. Then he starts scrolling through his phone. I ignored it, because I feel at this point I was going to snap. He then shook my leg and said, Did you hear me? So I responded with, Yeah, I did hear you. And no, go make it yourself. You were literally just out there. Your sense of freaking entitlement is way out of line. Do stuff for yourself. He became offended and instantly, like freaking clockwork, said, But I worked all freaking day. So I snapped back with, Yeah, I did too. In fact, I worked 12 hours to your 8. Like I said, do stuff for yourself. He is now saying that he is not acting entitled and that I was just taking my bad day out on him and that everything I said makes him feel unappreciated. Am I the a-hole? Did I push it too far? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Someone needs to knock your husband off his high horse. You two need to have a serious talk that at home, you're equals and he's not the boss. Hell, if he's treating employees like this, things won't go well at work either. Husband and I work an equal amount of hours, so we split the chores and take turns cooking. Sounds like he needs to pitch in too. Not the a-hole. He sounds like he's on a power trip. Had a co-worker, great guy, get promoted to a management position and start acting like this. He lasted two months before he get demoted and reprimanded. He went from a great guy to a braggart and he had started talking to us like we were idiots. A week later, I was given the promotion and made sure I stayed grounded slash kind to everyone. If you don't nip his entitlement in the bud, someone else will do it and it won't be pretty. Not the a-hole. And if that's how your husband is acting at work, his stint as an assistant manager will be a short-lived one. For the sake of his career, he needs to learn the difference between being a boss and being a leader. I'll bet he is throwing his weight around at work. The OP should keep a close watch for a change in behavior that could indicate Mr. Smart Alec was warned about his behavior once his employees got sick of it. Yep, I've had assistant managers like this. They get high on their ego and completely screw up the workplace. That's a danger of promoting someone that has not had any leadership training. Not the a-hole. Girl, nip this in the bud now before it goes any further. I understand he got a promotion, but he needs to reel it in. Tell him to grow up. Stop acting like a child. You work just like him and make him stop throwing money in your face. Also, just because his job is strenuous doesn't give him the right to act like a D. Good luck. Exactly. Lots of people have strenuous job. That's why it's called work. Now for the second story, am I the a-hole for telling my wife to step up as a mother? So I, 33 male, have been married to my wife, 31 female, for 6 years. Two years ago, we adopted our two kids, 7 female and 5 male, from Haiti. They were toddlers when we brought them home, so we had never really been through the newborn stage. Well, my wife and I decided to have a biological baby. She's currently 5 months old. Well, when she was born, my wife decided she needed to make up for all the lost time she was pregnant and in doing so, kinda left all the childcare on me. My wife loves the baby and cuddles with her, but the second she starts crying, my wife hands her over to me. 
She knows how to change a diaper, but she believes it isn't her job. It was never something we agreed upon. Like some weird deal where we agreed she would carry the baby for nine months and I would raise it. We formula feed, which I prefer. But I can't leave her home alone with the baby. Basically, yesterday, I had to take my seven-year-old to a soccer game. I left my wife with the baby as she was just sleeping in her crib. My wife called me mid-game and screamed at me about leaving the baby with her. She said that she had pooped and I had to come back and clean it up. I asked if she knew how to change a diaper. She used to be a full-time nanny and she said yes, but it's not her job. I drove back home, changed the baby and took her back to the soccer game. By the time I came back, there were only about 10 minutes left. One of the other moms told me that my daughter had been switched to center midfield and scored three times in a row and basically won for her team. I was so proud. When she was done, she asked me why the baby was here and I said I had to go pick her up. Then she asked if I had seen her while she was center mid and I told her the truth. She was so upset and wouldn't talk to me. I of course didn't badmouth my wife to her. I offered to go get her ice cream but she wasn't in the mood. When we got back home, I heard her crying to my wife. I obviously don't mind her venting to my wife, but my wife was saying things like, yeah, he shouldn't have done that, and I'm so sorry he treated you like that, even though I told her on the phone that I was going to miss part of the game if I came and picked the baby up. My wife and I got in an argument later. I told her that she actually has to care for the baby, and she basically called me selfish and lazy. We go to a marriage counselor. We don't have many problems in our marriage, but we had to do it for the adoption and we ended up sticking with it, as well as our own therapists. The marriage counselor has ruled out postpartum and she has suggested for my wife to do more with the baby, but she doesn't want to. Here's where I am definitely the a-hall. She said, stop acting like you're my slave or something. I'm Haitian, black, and she is white. I then snapped back, well, you need to step up as a parent. I know I'm the a-hall for saying that to her, but am I the a-hall for genuinely thinking it? Edit 1. Her therapist is technically called a psychiatrist, and I'm pretty sure they can make a diagnosis, but correct me if I'm wrong. 2. I meant we didn't have problems when we started counseling. Edit. I made it up to my daughter. I messaged all of the moms I knew and was able to find someone who got a video of her scoring. I showed her and she was so happy. We are having a late celebration at McDonald's, in case anyone cares. Edit 3. I put this in a comment but she was raised by a single father. It's not really my information to share why though. Now let's read the top comments of this post. Not the a-hole. She said that our daughter had pooped and I had to come back and clean it up. I asked if she knew how to change a diaper. She used to be a full-time nanny and she said yes but it's not her job. It's both of your jobs. Whoever is with the baby when she needs to be changed is the one who should change her. That's called being a parent. Asking you to come home from your other daughter's soccer game was completely unreasonable. But subsequently throwing you under the bus to the same daughter is beyond a pale. Right now, your wife is being a crappy spouse to you and a crappy mother to all her children. This needs to stop. And you should have not gone home to change the baby. You are enabling her behavior. Not the a-hole. I think her comment, stop acting like you're my slave, is the epitome of a Freudian slip. You didn't say anything about being a slave, right? Somewhere in her mind, she feels you're beneath her. Then she twisted the situation into you being the bad guy? She wants to be a mom and wife without the effort. I'm sorry you're in this situation. Edited to add, you're a good man and father. No, I never mentioned the word slave or anything related. It kinda came out of nowhere. Dude, as a white woman myself, that comment made me sick to my stomach. Has your wife ever showed signs, even subtle ones? Of being a racist? Because that's a messed up thing for her to say. No, we don't speak about race that much, but when we do, she's never said anything that could be considered racist before. Not the a-hole. She treats you like a slave and gaslights you in front of your daughter. She needs a new therapist because clearly the current ones aren't working. The sooner the better, because she's already poisoning the kids against you and you don't want your relationship with them to suffer. With the way she speaks about it, slash bonds with our baby, both of her therapists, her personal one is technically a psychiatrist, have ruled out postpartum. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for giving my wife an ultimatum? My wife and I have been married for 15 years. We are child-free and in our early 40s. A major reason why we are child-free is that my wife grew up in an abusive home and a huge fear of hers is that she would perpetuate that cycle of abuse. 
She's been in therapy for as long as I've known her, and she's been pretty open with me about her childhood, but not completely. She says she isn't keeping much from me, but I have a feeling she's leaving out a worse stuff. She has three younger siblings, two brothers and a sister. My wife pretty much raised them on her own growing up, and she has a very strong mama bear instinct when it comes to her siblings. About two years ago, one of her brothers Odied and my wife asked if he could live with us. I agreed on the expectation that he would go to rehab and that one relapse and he's gone. To his credit, he worked hard at rehab, got himself clean, and has been living with us ever since. He works full-time doing construction and has saved a decent amount of money. He wants to buy a house but has no credit history, so I've been helping him build his credit score and has told him I would consider co-signing a loan if he needed it. I've been really impressed by how well he has done for himself. About six months ago, my sister-in-law was on our front steps in tears with her three kids. I have not gotten the full story from my sister-in-law, but from what my wife told me, sister-in-law had an affair, her husband found out. They were both drunk and got into a fight and sister-in-law told her husband that her affair partner was better in bed and husband kicked her out. As far as I know, no divorce process has been started yet. Sister-in-law and the kids have been staying with us since then. We don't have a big house, so it is way too crowded and, in my opinion, not sustainable. I don't like sister-in-law. She doesn't discipline her kids. They don't clean up after themselves. Sister-in-law has made no effort to find a job. She gets drunk in our home. I hate it. There was no one single moment where I realized that sister-in-law needed to leave. But I had a conversation with my wife and told her that I can't stand sister-in-law and her kids living here any longer. I told her that sister-in-law needs to start looking into other options. They have overstayed their welcome. My wife accused me of playing favorites with her siblings, that we've allowed her brother to stay for years. We can't just kick sister-in-law and her kids out. I said we aren't kicking them out. We are going to tell them that they have X amount of time to figure out other options. My wife said that I have no idea what sister-in-law is going through and what it's like to live with an abuser. I agreed with her, but I felt that the situation sister-in-law was in with her husband wasn't the same as their childhood. Sister-in-law got herself into this situation. It is not our responsibility to get her out of it. I told my wife that if sister-in-law and her kids were not out of the house by the end of the year, that I would move out myself. She looked shocked when I said that and called me an a-hole as she walked away. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I was your wife. All this child of an abuser who cared for my siblings. It took me destroying several relationships to realize I had to stop setting myself on fire to care for them. Your wife genuinely believes her siblings need her, and to a certain extent they do. However, what she is doing is enabling your sister-in-law not supporting her. Support looks like what you're doing for your brother-in-law, which has conditions that help support him being healthy, developing a stable life, and creating a plan for his future, saving for a home of his own. This is a great example of helping. What she is doing for sister-in-law is enabling because it in no way supports her changing her own life and thus becoming more independent. By not working, effectively parenting, and being drunk, she is continuing that same cycle with her own children, in your home and on your dime. I don't blame you for being upset one bit. I will say, before you give up, invite your wife to therapy so she can examine this dynamic with the therapist and really unpack why she thinks this is helping why her bond with them is more important than the one in your marriage, and finally, how to stop. My wife and I have been in couples counseling since my brother-in-law moved in. I probably should have included that in the post. We have been with the same therapist for the last 18 months. My wife doesn't see how I can be so willing to help one of her siblings and not the other. For her, all it takes is to see one of her siblings in need, and she jumps in and is willing to do whatever it takes to help. I don't have that same instinct. And I feel like brother-in-law did a great job of helping himself to get better. Sister-in-law has shown none of that same desire or attitude, so of course I am going to treat them differently. Their two situations are not the same. Info. Has the specific topic of your sister-in-law and how you feel about the situation been brought up in therapy? Yep, on many occasions. My wife agrees that the situation is not sustainable and that it is putting stress on our marriage. But as soon as we get home and she is faced with the idea of her sister and the kids out on their own, she caves. She just can't stand to see one of her siblings in need and not help. Not the a-hole. Your wife needs to decide whether she wants to live with and enable her sister or whether she wants to remain married. Not the a-hole. She essentially gave you an ultimatum first. 
that marrying her means doing whatever she likes with her family in a take it or leave it situation with no input from you. That's not fair. It's not right. And it's absolutely not sustainable in a partnership. You called her on it and offered up a reasonable solution that she again unilaterally decided wasn't okay. You're asking for a way to preserve your marriage and your sanity. She's telling you her family comes first. I'd be looking into divorce on that basis alone. God, could you imagine the lies that would get spread about Opie abusing her if she left her? Sadly, yes. Better to start telling family and friends now why you're looking at this decision in the first place. And that's it for this video, folks. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on your notification to get updated on the latest videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.